We know from precise measurements that the Earth goes around the Sun once every 365.256366 days. As the Earth orbits, with each hemisphere tilting toward and away from its parent star, the seasons bring on cycles of life, birth and reproduction, decay, and death. Only about one billionth of the sun's actual energy hits the Earth, and much of that gets absorbed by dust and water vapor in the upper atmosphere. What does make it down to the surface sets many planetary cycles in motion. You can see it in the annual melting and refreezing of ice at the poles, the ebb and flow of heat in the tropical oceans, the seasonal cycles of chlorophyll production in plants on land and at sea, and in the biosphere at large. These cycles are embedded in still longer Earth cycles. Ocean currents, for example, are thought to make complete cycles ranging from four to around 16 centuries. Moving out in time as the Earth rotates on its axis, it completes a series of interlocking wobbles called Milankovic cycles every 23 to 41,000 years. They have been blamed for the onset of ice ages about every 100,000 years. Then there's the carbon cycle. It begins with rainfall over the oceans and coastal waves that pull carbon dioxide into the sea. There it's captured by ocean plants, including tiny organisms called plankton. They are eaten by fish and other creatures, and the carbon is passed on up the food chain. Eventually, when plants and animals die or expel waste, the carbon falls to the ocean bottom, where it's impounded in layers of sediment. Without people, it takes a volcanic explosion or a dramatic lowering of sea levels to send the carbon back into the air, often after millions of years. The idea that Earth and life changes on deep time scales emerged in revolutions of thought associated with Copernicus and Darwin. But the processes that shape a planet like ours play only the smallest of roles in the evolution of the cosmos. So to glimpse time's broadest arcs, we must look to the universe beyond. 